Hello. I am Dr. Cosmo. Let's continue the lecture. Here is a story of the working honeybees. When observing the honeybee, 20% of the bees are very hardworking. If one were to take those 20% and observe them, now only 20% of them work very hard. This is called the law of the working honeybees. Imagine there are 1,000 honeybees. If one were to select and separate the 200 most hardworking bees, in the next instant, 160 of them would cease to work hard. Why did the 160 bees stop working hard? Did their personality suddenly change? Was there a terrible condition that made them go on strike? The answer is very simple. The reason is because the bees are the projection of the consciousness of the observer. The reason why even the 80% of those 200 honeybees stop working as well is because the bees are nothing but a screen and the source of the projector is within the consciousness of the self. Within one's consciousness, there is an awareness of a hardworking 20% and non-hardworking 80%. Even if there were 1000 or 200 bees, this is simply a matter of enlarging or shrinking the screen. Unless the 20% ratio within oneself changes, this proportion will not change even if one were to change the screen. By no means do the bees have their own intention of slacking off. Then is it better to get rid of this pattern of laziness of not working? No, you cannot do that. The lazy bees supposedly should have intellectual strengths. They also dislike conflict so they would be excellent for restraining the violent outbreaks of the troops. Shortcomings are strengths. Many functions and abilities are necessary to us. As well as the society of honeybees, human beings must be able to adapt to various scenes, so we have some patterns of role according to various situations. In one situation, some people seem to be lazy, but in another situation, the same people seem to work so hard. It is made so that each pattern would not be made up of a composition of 100%. Please keep this in mind as we ponder along. When MJ was researching history, recall that he discovered pairs of countries in two different eras that traced the same history. Furthermore, the paired countries also remarkably had the same land shape. And these pairs had various shapes. MJ realized that these shapes are representing the functions of our consciousness. The reason for this is because the historic countries appeared as if they each had their own personalities and the land shapes looked a lot like their character analysis. Moreover, he also realized that the shapes exist solely in MJ's consciousness. Just as I explained in the story with the honeybees, if all of the bees were 100% hardworking then they would not be able to correspond to all of the situations. If we are to live smoothly through the various situations, many different types would become necessary. Say, for instance, this is formulated as a circle, a triangle, a square, a diamond, and this basic catalog is the country shape that MJ discovered. The pattern creates the personality, such as personality of circle, personality of square, and so on. Some people believe that our personality isn't changed forever, but it is not the case. By changing this in order, we are able to adapt to our environment, advance, and enjoy life's pleasures. Now, among the many fractals of land shapes, let us take a closer look at this particular map. They really look alike. The difference is only in the size. Just as mentioned in the story with the honeybees about the system of similar projections, the difference in size is a matter of projecting onto a small or large screen. However, a different issue arises here. When you look closer, within Europe, as illustrated in the larger map that shows North America and Soviet Union, there is a small terrain that combines the Vulcan Peninsula and the Anatolia Peninsula. What does this mean? This means that the same type of projection was repeated twice and that was overlapped onto one sheet. In other words, the world map is not a single screen, but rather it was already a stockpile of many screens. That is to say, the world that we believed in, in reality does not exist, but rather it is something that we are aware of in our minds as overlaps. What does this mean? I had previously talked about how history is projected. In the depth of time, we were under the impression that some arcs were connected as a spiral and we believed it was linear. It seems as though in the same way, 
we must question whether space is not one wide continuum, but pieces connected together infinitely. Let's return to the story of the honeybees. When listening to the story, we were not calculating it by adding the 1000 bees and the 200 bees. We knew from the beginning that the total number of bees was constant. However, in time and space, we perceive the things that are already superimposed as one thing. When compared to the bees, it's as if to say we are calculating it based on the supposition of having 1200 bees. The number of times that they are stacked up makes it that much greater, and as such would become an immense number. For this reason, the energy level far exceeds the actual level. Now, let us recall the definition of reality. Reality is what is felt with the direct senses. If so, the space that you create as reality is actually very small. We can only feel with our direct senses, and yet what you feel with your indirect senses and declare as truly existing only exists in your mind. Even as we listen to this explanation, we still feel as if there exists a wide space. We can't help but feel that even if there is no way to precisely measure time, there is a way to measure space. Even though Greece and North America are the projection of the same shape, we feel as if after visiting North America we can go and visit Greece. Let me just mention, that your body is one, so you cannot possibly exist in two places at the same time. Your world is like that of a soap bubble. Your surrounding world is made up of something like a bubble, so when you move, you will always be at the center of the world. Furthermore, it feels as if the world is infinitely continuous. Even if you were an astronaut, when you are in outer space, yes, there exists space. However, your home is an illusion limited by what is in your mind. At the same time, due to the feedback system, the inside of the bubble is like an inverted mirror ball. Because the mirrors are facing each other, it feels as if your world is infinite. Everything that is portrayed there is all inside of you. You register something small as being far. With gleaming eyes like those of a child, you are fantasizing a distant world saying, what a wide world. A brain scientist would ask the unique question, which is larger, the universe, or your mind, and reveal, it is your mind. You can begin to understand that it is precisely so. We must eliminate a big part of the world which we once believed to be so big. Furthermore, we must recognize its true size. What kind of world would you find?